Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Good morning, squad, and welcome to an errand vlog. It's one of those days. I'm back in London, and I've got a lot of car-related tasks that need to be done. So today, in this video, for the first time actually, I'm going to drive all five of the different cars that I currently own on one day. So that's a little bit surreal. But we're going to get started with the AMG GTR. It has a lot of road grime that needs cleaning off. So I'm going to go down to Posh Wash. Then I'm going to take the Focus RS in as well. It's all-wheel drive, but I need to swap it over to winter tires. It's that time of year, especially if I'm going to be taking this one to Germany ahead of the arrival of a Focus RS Red Edition. You heard it here first. Then we're going to go over to my storage. I've got a couple of things to sort out with the Ferrari, the McLaren and the Aston. I'm going to put them all on special tyre cushions, which are really quite cool, which protects them a bit if you don't drive them so often. More about that later on. And then one other thing I can think of right now, which is a special modification tool to install to the LT. Maybe I won't get that all done today. There are one or two other things, no doubt, that will come up along the way. But let's get started with the GTR. Before I even get as far as departing, you will notice these boxes lurking behind the car. I have just emptied the contents into it. They are Kuberth Easy Rise tire savers. And at the moment, if I open up the boot, you will see right now it is very full of these. And you can see some custom made logos there. So we'll check those out when I get to the garage. I'm gonna take the GTR via Posh Wash because although it's a black car in the dark right now, believe me, it is absolutely filthy and grimy at the moment. Whenever you take a car out, they just get destroyed. So let us step in. We will get the car started up and head on the way now towards Posh Wash. And then I will be coming back here to collect the focus. I think the GTR deserves a shout out for quite how much stuff is currently in the boot. In fact, I've used this car for transporting loads of luggage now, but we've got three full sets of tyre cushions in the back and I've not had to use the passenger seat or anything. But driving through London, there is no traffic because it is Christmas time, on which note, Merry Christmas, of course, to you all. But it is very damp and gloomy out here. Not exactly the most exciting day to drive. However, this is car number one of the day, the AMG GTR, the newest. It seems fair, I suppose, to drive the newest one first in this vlog, but I'll get towards Posh Wash and then I'll try and show you how dirty it is. It's horrible. When I told you that this car was caked in grime, I very much meant it. Just come and have a look around here at the aerodynamic streams that it has going across the car, split around the windscreen. The wheels and tires are all filthy, side skirts naturally. Come around to the back though, it is just a caked layer of grime over the entire car. Look at that, look at the way it's accumulated there and come down here to the exhaust tip. That's supposed to be gloss black. Um, that will need a very delicate clean from all the salt and general rubbish that's on the roads. But this is a daily driver. This is being used for just about everything. So it was going to get messy. The interior is actually pretty clean. So no stress there. I just love seeing all of these lines and the airflow around it and over the top of it. Anyway, we will be leaving this here and getting it cleaned up when we get back. I've just realized that at this point, I've forgotten to tell you about something really cool. So we've just launched the Shmi 150 app. So you can get it now for Android. It's launching soon for iOS. But we literally have the app where you can see the latest videos, listen to the cars, learn more about Shmi 150. You can download some wallpapers, but we're open a little bit to ideas, what you guys would like to see. But literally, get the app if you're on Android, have a go, tell us what you'd like. But I think it's pretty cool that we've got this. It's up and running. We've made it, we've got it out there. Yeah, quite exciting, really. The merry-go-round continues. It is time now for number two, keyless Focus RS, always nice. So this has just been brought back over from Germany, but let me climb in and we will take the Focus over now to collect the winter tires so I can fit them all in the back of it. It's a life we go with the Mount Tune Focus RS. So I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with the Mount Tune or whether I'll do the Mount Tune again on the new one, but this does sound good for this kind of car. Definitely did not pick the right day to do this if you went just by the weather. Everything is gonna get so filthy and grimy. However, it's nice to be driving the Focus again. It just fits through every gap relative to driving a supercar. And because you're sat up high, you can see more, yet it still has a lot of power, which is why I have bought another of the same car. I appreciate to a lot of people that makes no sense. However, I quite like the idea of one in red. Maybe we'll do some more modifications on it in the future. And really just to renew and refresh while the Mark III generation Focus is still here. So the new red edition that I'm gonna be getting is one of 300. I'll talk you through my spec in due course, uh, but I'm very excited for that to arrive, maybe towards spring. I'll let you know more when I have it. Welcome to 
tyre land where I store my spare tyres inside the Richbrook tyre covers but we've got the FF's winter tyres those aren't going on at the moment the McLaren's all season P0's for road trips those are some of these and then I've got to work out which ones are the Focus RS's Michelin winter tyres the Mercedes summer Sport Cup 2's aren't here at the moment but you can see I've also got uh, the original Focus RS exhaust amongst my other junk but let me work out which ones we're taking now well everybody needs a practical car here you can actually fit about eight tyres in here throw that in jump back in the car and off we go question for you guys should I keep this number plate on the new focus or should I change it and use one of the other ones like the 14 plate or maybe even the 18 plate depending when the car comes let me know I don't really know what it is about this car but I can tell you this downshift cracks are certainly a big part of it the character of the thing it's very not me in a car but I think that's why I like it so much it's such a surprise and it's so easy to use and relative to driving supercars it's not stressful yet yeah, this car is still very fast as i've discovered in scotland and places i've been driving it before and you can go down the autobahn at 160 miles an hour no problem which is pretty crazy when you think it's a ford focus anyway nearly back towards posh wash now um, light load in the back doesn't really affect anything and then it will be swap around again <laughs> goodness it really is just endless smiles in here anyway back at posh rush now that is one much cleaner amg gtr that's how the car is supposed to look <laughs> much much better I like that a lot the focus however if we come back here is now completely filthy uh, apart from the rain it hasn't been washed equally in a rather long time too i'm not gonna lie um we'll look around the back here uh yeah Let's get rid of some of that grime before I pick it up too. Well, this is now looking an awful lot better than it did earlier. The calipers are now yellow again. The paintwork is back to black. And you know, a fun thing about the front of this car, the overhang, I've still not once, not one single time up to this point, scraped that front splitter on the ground somehow, maybe through some snow, but that's a different story. It's just short enough that even though it looks crazy low, it doesn't actually hit. Let me come around now and jump in because I need to head back now towards the storage and uh, go check out the other cars. Uh, always a good fun start up. So we'll go sort everything else out. Just sign my seat back forwards. Oh, there we go. Uh, manual bucket seat, actually. And, uh, yeah, crack on with what's next. It is funny jumping between cars that are so completely different, the Focus to the GTR. But one other exciting thing to tell you guys about, the Auto Sport Show, the performance car show at the NEC in January, the 11th to the 14th of Jan. Like last year, I'm going to be back in the live action arena being part of the show. Some of my cars are going to be out there in the show and also in the exhibition as well. So if you're in the UK and you're able to make it up to uh, the NEC in Jan, be sure to come to Auto Sport. I am very much looking forward to it. I've heard there's some interesting stuff coming inside the show and as part of that whole action arena. I'm looking forward to it an awful lot. So yeah, Autosport's happening again. It's nice to be back here with the cars. They've been living undercover, plugged into trickle charges. I've just taken the cover off the LT and the FF, but they're all still plugged in. I'm gonna go through them one by one. Fingers crossed they all start without a hitch. That is the intention of the trickle, to keep the batteries juiced up, but it's been a while. It's been about eight weeks since I last drove the LT and the GT8. The FF a little bit more recently, but since taking delivery of the GTR and all my trips to Dubai and around Europe and being in Germany, I've basically not had the opportunity to drive them, especially with with the rubbish weather. So I'm gonna take them around in circles inside the storage just to make sure they're running, they're fine, rotate the wheels, get the engines pumped a little bit, get the fuel flowing through them. But I think let's start off with the LT. Hopefully all goes absolutely fine. So cover is off, it is all clean and looking lovely. I'm moving the cars to their different space today. Let's pop the bonnets. I've got the key in my pocket. Pop open the door as well. I just actually put the uh, cover in here. But trickle for the LT just unplugs as so. You can check the lights to make sure they're working properly. It's funny though, a lot of people get confused when you plug a non-electric battery car into a, a trickle socket. Anyway, let's close this down, come round, and this is gonna be the moment of truth as to whether this car starts up first time. So, ooh, it's nice to be back. I love the interior of the McLarens. Gosh, it feels weird. I haven't driven it for so long. So, fingers crossed. Let's go. Perfect. That is what I was hoping for. So I'm going to go around in circles now and then park it in its new spot. 
LT in position. I'm going to leave that running for a moment. It's driven around in circles just a little bit. All is completely fine with it from what I can tell. Let's go get the GT8. I've always been a big fan of these moments when you lift up the car cover and you have the nice clean shiny car awaiting you underneath it. Number two to start up then, and definitely the best startup sound you're going to hear today. Well, actually, between this and the FF, it might be quite close, but key in, fingers crossed. Hey, I missed that noise. My goodness, that is a grumble. Aston Martin nailing it. Well, I noticed on the dashboard, time for regular service, that is true. The car is about one year old, it is due and booked for about two weeks time. Check tires though is an interesting message. It was showing me the display a second ago uh, of the tire pressures and one was just one PSI down, which is not significant. You wouldn't think that that would be a, uh, a problem. Let's see. Naturally, one always gets a little bit concerned. Supercars are like children or babies. You have to look after them, give them love and attention. But just having a quick glance here at the tire pressure sensors, they should be all 30, I believe. So they're all a touch low. Now that could be because they're very cold, but it doesn't look like they're flat. The fact that they're all slightly low just suggests that they were slightly underinflated before. So I'll pop them all back up and make sure they're all correct, obviously, uh, the next time I take it out or when it gets serviced, certainly before I next drive up the road. But GTA tool looks fine, so I'm going to leave this running, go turn off the LT. Magic car swap, here we are though, handbrake on and off. LT did exactly what it was supposed to. Thank you, McLaren. The final one is easily the most troublesome of my babies. Let's open up the boot and unplug the trickle charger, which has all the right lights on it. So fingers crossed that's connected just inside there. It's out. And by the way, if you're wondering what happened to this post, while the FF was away on service, somebody used my space and literally knocked it over. Literally went straight into it. Not smooth, but it wasn't me. If it was me, you would know about it because the back of my car would have some damage on it. Anyways, oh, I haven't actually unlocked the car yet. Let us step inside. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Sometimes in the past, even on trickle charge, the FF has struggled. It is a six-year-old car. It uses an awful lot of juice with its V12 electronics. Ah, so far, ignition on, everything looks good. Let's get ready then. Start button on the steering wheel. Let's go. Yes, victory, we're in life. Amazing, trouble free. More circles done, a parking sensor that is going completely nuts, but now let's get in the GT8 and turn that off. This is all going completely without a hitch, which is awesome. I was really worried that I might have a problem today doing some of this, but let us pop out the key. GT8 all good and happy. FF now on that side. I don't want to forget my growing pile of trickle charges and cables though, those are quite important. I've pulled the GTR over here as well to make it easier to get the cushions out for the minute. Let us just turn off the FF so you turn it off in first gear. Off it goes. Magic. One more key, one more job done. So that was all very easy. Well, in terms of getting the cars here, now it is cushion time. So we come round to the uh, AMG GTR. I've got to find the right key in my pocket. I've got way too many of them here because it is time to unload the car cushions, car pillows, depending how you'd like to call them. We're going to have a look at these in a second with the nice Shmi 50 logos on them and then I'll line them all up with the cars. Almost certainly, at least one of you has said to yourself, wait, what? Did you just say that you have cushions for your cars? Well, yes, I do. And I'm going to explain to you what they are, how they work and what you use them for. And as you've seen, I've left my cars parked up here recently. I've not been driving them too much. And that means that I've been running the risk of getting flat spots on the tires. You know, you're sitting with a big heavy weight, one and a half tons or so on very small contact points on the underside of the tires, which can ruin the ride and mean they get pretty nasty very quickly and you have to replace them. Well, if you're going to leave the car for a while, you can get tire cushions as we have here, the personalized easy rise cushion from Kuberth, who have very kindly hooked me up with these. Big shout out to them. I can put these under the cars and basically they change the contact area instead of being three degrees on the flat to 58 degrees of contact, which means that the pressure being exerted on the tire is massively reduced and basically increases the life of them. And given the weather outside is horrendous, you can even hear the rainwater going through the gutters over the head of me. Um, the cars aren't going to be going anywhere soon. So I'm going to put these in position. Basically, you put the cars just ahead of where you want, pop these against the back of the tires. So for example, on the LT ones, purple, 
uh, logo there on the black, obviously, very nicely done by them. You pop them into place just behind the tyres, and then you do that on all four corners, drive the car back, and then it's in place sitting on the cushions. Very easy to actually do that, to be honest. Um, so we'll do that one by one, and then they will magically be all slightly in the air. That was actually surprisingly nice and easy. Car is up on its cushions. I'll need to triple it and uh, plug it in, put the cover on. There's one more thing with the LT. Okay, so it's very simple. You just do that. Magic. There was one more thing for the LT Spider, and I'm not gonna have time to install it right now, but I can at least introduce and show you the Mods for Cars Smart Top. Now this is something I actually used to have when I had an R8 Spider, and they've just released it for the 12C, 650S, and for the 675 LT Spider as well. This is a unit that you configure from your computer, install into the back of the car, and it will allow you to change the behavior of the roof mechanism and the windows. So for example, the biggest thing for me is that a triple click now on the unlock on the key fob is going to open the roof. The roof would open in one touch remote by triple clicking that, likewise it will close. A double press will open the windows or close the windows when it's installed of course. You can make the switch inside one touch rather than having to hold it. You can change all sorts of different settings which I really like because I like being able to walk up to a car and opening the roof as you come to it. I just think it's one, cool to watch. Two, it means that it's area inside if you're parked in a hot country. I always like to park the car with the roof up so I don't get any trouble or problems. It's not that complicated to install. You open this, uh, take off a panel behind the seats and plug it in. Uh, it doesn't intervene, interfere with anything. You can actually disable it as well, and then it's not a problem at all. So I've used one before. I'm gonna get that set up at some point, ready for the summer season with this car, because I've said many times, it's a keeper. That's why it's sitting here now on cushions. But that's been a bit of a very random video, I think. A Couple of spontaneous things, errands, like I said. That's what it's like, running a fleet of these kind of cars. Stuff that needs to be done, looking after them, making sure they're always in tip-top form and condition. I'm obviously going to put all the trickles back in, cover them all up, and park them away again. Well, obviously, I'm going to take the GTR away. I've got three spaces here. But it's super cool for me seeing them. Still very much a pinch moment. What an epic, I think, little collection that's growing here. Not too sure if the FF will hang around that much longer, but the GT3 is inbound. And there are more things in the future that I've vaguely alluded to as well. And of course, the Focus RS Red Edition. But as always, guys, a very big thank you to you for watching, supporting and following these adventures. A very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year if you're watching this during the winter season. What, I guess, an awesome year this has been. So thanks again. I, I can't believe it. And I'm looking forward to wrapping it up and taking a look at some of the best bits. Anyway, that's it for now. Garage vlog errand running day complete. Thanks again. And I'll see you very soon. Cheers.